Alright, is it just me or has it been way too freaking long? I am sorry about the uh, lack of updates, guys. I have been so freaking busy all month. Um, it's kind of bordering on the level of ridiculous. I have been getting work done. I just haven't really had time to post much of it. I think my last video I mentioned that you know I had the whole Christmas thing with Whitney's parents up here, then my parents coming up that day, and uh, since then it's just continued to be a blur of crap. I had to help my sister move, you know, just New Year's crap in general. Um, my birthday was about a week after that, and then I started school for the new semester. So it's just been kind of freaking crazy. And finally just had time to do a video. It's funny because the video I did after Christmas, I had wanted to show off some of the stuff that I'd gotten. And now I feel like it's uh, a little late to be doing that. But you know what? I'll, I'll go and talk about that real quick anyway. I mean, I got a lot of stuff. I'm just going to hit on the stuff that uh, you horror guys are probably going to appreciate more than anything else. And just a couple things. But uh, Whitney and her brother both got me... Um, biographies of Whitney got me Kane Hodder's and her brother got me Robert Anglin's and I like poured through both of these I haven't read books that quickly in a long time it was really awesome biography so if you haven't read these I would readily recommend both of them Kane's is a lot more interesting I say Robert Anglin's more of you know I am an actor I am super serious actor it's like dude you, you spent your whole life wearing a glove with a Christmas sweater on you're not that high class of an actor. Kane's is really interesting. Kane's is a lot of fun. Just because I have to show him. I got Godzilla slippers. These things are ridiculously awesome. It's probably one of the coolest Christmas presents I've ever gotten. <laughs> Just because they're absolutely ridiculous. I got the NECA Nightmare 1 Freddy Glove. Which isn't quite as nice as the remake one as far as build quality goes. But still really freaking awesome. I'll be doing reviews of this over on Outside the Box Reviews. I actually already shot it. I just have to get around to uploading it. And there's no way I'm going to be able to get it on camera, but I got a zombie attack hoodie, which is freaking crazy. It has, like, cuts and stuff on it and brains exposed and all this stuff. It's really fun. There's plenty more stuff I could show, but I'm just going to limit it to one more thing, and that is this stuff right here. Sculpey. It's Sculpey 3. It's not as nice as the Primo, but, uh... I have a lot of this now. I have a lot of Sculpey now. Um, so expect to see a lot more work, because I got clay forever. And what have I been doing with that clay, you might ask? Well, I've been doing work on the Victor Crowley Commission. And I'm still working on him. Um, I'm trying to get everything right, so I'm kind of taking my time on it a little bit, trying to make sure everything looks correct. Um, right now I have him in the overalls that I bought for my own project, my part two. So I haven't weathered him up or anything yet because I haven't really gotten that far in my own project to look at it. But it's kind of what he would look like with the overalls on. I've only got one of his arms sculpted out, but I've got a good amount of detail on it. Big. Whoa, head's not attached yet either. Did I mention that? Head's not attached yet. I've got the big bulging muscles and stuff on his arm and I've got the big clump up here. That's what I really liked about this body. I mean, it was a cheapo body, but um, I could actually use these shoulder pads to put in Victor's big, you know, gigantic shoulders. He still retains articulation. You could still, you know, get a full range of movement out of the arms and everything. So I thought that was really important for the character and a really, you know, a good thing to have with a Victor Crowley figure. So... He's got one arm sculpted up, the other one I'm going to finish up today. And his whole body is sculpted under here, like down to the, the waist. You can see on the side here, all the detail in there. If I turn around, I did split the back of it so you can see his spine coming through. That's the same on both uh, Crowley's in the movie, so I figured I'd just go ahead and take care of that. But you can definitely see the spine coming out. It looks really awesome. I, I'm pretty proud of how I did the spine. And then once again down here, you got more of the detail in the, the body and all that. Um, the head's going to be magnetically attached. So it's going to just stay up there when I'm done with it. It's not going to fall off every three seconds. I was having some issues with the head. I was trying to get it so I could put the magnet on the body. 
and the metal piece inside the head itself, but I'd already done the head when, uh, you know, the guy getting this had decided he wanted the head to be magnetic, so I'm just gonna have to put the magnet inside the head. I was trying to just do it so that I didn't have to use a magnet for each head, but, you know, this'll work. It's not a big deal. The magnets, I think, were five bucks for a pack of seven or something like that, so it's not really a big deal. Uh, Victor, I'm gonna end up padding out his costume a little bit, especially his lower section. He's pretty skinny just because of the base body. But I have bulked him up quite a bit through sculpting, and I'm gonna keep working on that to get him to look the way Victor Crowley should. I also have the first of his accessories. Uh, this is the hatchet, obviously. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. It's got a real wood handle. Uh, I think the blades are done pretty well on it, the axe head. You can see, I mean, the real catch it kill in that movie is when he takes the guy and cuts him clean in half, you know, the long way. So, it's really bloody on this end, and it kind of tapers off down here, kind of like it was just smeared up the blade rather than cut into. And I have little bits of guts on the blade itself, just a little chunkier flesh that it's bit into. And that's what I'm going to try with all the weapons. I still have the sander and the um, shovel to finish. I'm still working on them. I'm not ready to show them off yet, but that's what they're going to look like, too. Just kind of some chunks of meat on them, as well as the blood itself. And Victor's going to get a lot more detail. The paint's going to bring out a lot of the sculpting I did that I'm sure you can't really tell right now. Uh, the hands, I'm going to do some detail work on. I'll use some puff paint or something to give them some good detail. And just in general, I'm going to touch them up. This version is going to be haired. Honestly, as I go along with it, I'm probably just going to you know, figure out what I need to do for these overalls for my own figure and weather them up to match that so even though it won't be the correct style of overalls on this figure for videos and all that um, you can get a better idea what he's gonna look like. As I said before he sculpted all the way down to the waist just to make sure you know when you turn him sideways you still see the sculpting and he still looks like a monster Kind of one of the things that I can't show you right now without taking the overalls off, but I'm kind of proud of is I gave him like a, a monster six pack. He's, you know, muscular, but it's still really deformed. I was pretty proud of how they came out. Uh, one thing I did have to do with this figure, unfortunately, is I had to lose the waist articulation. Um, just the body itself, it turned out that it was a really fragile bit the way they built it on the figure. But this joint up here, the upper torso swivel. Ah, stupid head. Drive me nuts. Uh, this joint up here is good and solid, and it still has a good range of movement in it. And I was kind of thinking of the Marvel Universe figures and stuff like that. You can kind of just get away with that joint, especially because with overalls, he's not really going to be able to swivel here. So unfortunately, I had to lock that joint down, but this joint should make up for that. And that's kind of how Victor Crowley would turn anyway, so hopefully it's not too big of a deal. Speaking of which, um, I don't know if it's still even easy to come by in stores, it could be, but back in early December this thing came out, uh, I've never read the, the Hack Slash comics, but uh, this one's got Victor Crowley, it's like a annual special edition or something, it's Hatchet Slash, so you got Victor in there, it's uh, not the best story, but it's interesting, and if you're into Victor Crowley, it's kind of a cool thing to pick up. I've gone total comic nerd the last, like, month and a half. I started getting back into reading X-Men comics, so while I was at the store, I saw this and I had to pick it up. You know, here I was, all ready to go, and I forgot the last thing I had to show off. This ugly mug right here is a work in progress, actually pretty early in the works, but this is for a custom concept Jason, uh, my own design. I guess I would call him, I don't know, one had his hybrid Myers, I guess I can call this my hybrid Jason. He's gonna be kind of taking up where the remake left off, but I wanted to give him the, you know, the scars that are signature to the original Jason, the, the axe wound and the machete wound. But basically at the end of the remake, you know, he's kind of in the lake and all that stuff. Um, and we keep getting the promises of a sequel in the snow. I don't know if we're ever going to get that. But this is going to be my take on it. Jason gets frozen under the ice of Crystal Lake and begins to deteriorate. He's going to kind of have not just the normal decomposed zombie look, but also some frostbite as well. I'm going to give him a 
good long trench coat, some snow effects, just some cool uh, things you could do that are different with the snow that we haven't seen before on Friday the 13th. It would finally explain the freaking hockey mask if, you know, people were playing hockey and maybe he uh, took one off of somebody. I think that could be kind of appropriate. So I'm going to keep working on this. It's a little too clean right now for my taste. I mean, it's got the skull underneath, and then I'm trying to work up the flesh on top, and I'm not entirely happy. It just kind of looks like a zombie. It doesn't look like Jason to me yet. But I'm going to keep plugging away at this, too, in my spare time. So that is what I am up to. Now that the holidays are over, you know, and all that crap, my birthday's over, I kind of am getting more into a normal routine of things. So... You know, kind of back to a normal pace. Should be doing updates more regularly. Though I feel like I say that every freaking video, and I just never can do updates as frequently as I'd like to, which really sucks. But I am accepting commissions. You know, do 7-inch stuff. 6-scale stuff is where I'd love to be doing things. But, you know, if you want a smaller figure, it's all good. We can, we can definitely handle that. So just PM me, and we can talk details about anything like that. Also, if you guys haven't seen, I'm going to post the links in the description um, for my Twitter, which is Cerberus Customs, and Cerberus Customs on Facebook. Uh, you can follow me there. Um, those also haven't gotten updated as regularly as I would like, but every so often while I'm working on stuff, I'll take a picture of what I'm doing and pop it on there and just kind of post some things that I just don't feel like making a video about, but I want to update the world on. Um, honestly, on Twitter lately, I've haven't been using it for much more than um, live tweeting during episodes of Face Off. Which, uh, if you haven't watched the show, if you're into movie monster makeup stuff, it's kind of a, a fun one to check out. And also, since I know plenty of you are into the whole figure collecting thing, uh, check out. I'll post another link down below as well for my other channel, Outside the Box Reviews. I have some horror figures I've been reviewing on there, but for the next couple months, my main focus is going to be reviewing the figures from the Marvel movies leading up to Avengers, so I have a whole big project of that in the works. But I will be throwing up some horror figures and sci-fi figures now and then throughout the whole thing. i still got some Predators to do, i got some Freddies and Jasons to throw in there, so keep an eye out for them on that channel. And just keep an eye here, and I promise I will do my best to be back with something interesting much more quickly than I have uh, lately. I'll see you guys later.